there are some really simple steps you can take to fix constipation. And I'm not just talking about a miracle cure or one-off, that you don't eat that or do eat that. It's about developing a system, a program. It's about understanding the type of constipation you've got. It's a, not one condition. There are many things that can contribute to constipation. For example, poor sleep, stress, a whole raft of things, as well as poor diet and lifestyle. So lots of things. We'll get onto that in a moment. I want to keep this very short, but understanding a bit about constipation means that you can take the actions that can suit you. And what you need to do is look at it and say, okay, which one is affecting me? What are the small steps that I can take? And it's not about doing it just now. It's about building it into your lifestyle. So if, if we begin with having a look at what happens in constipation, and most people here, we've got the bowels down here, and most people think it's all to do with the bowels. It's not. That's just the end product, so to speak. Constipation starts in the brain, it starts in the mouth, it starts in the di digestive system. And there are all different types of constipation. Um, I'm ignoring a physical, some physical damage done at the moment, but we've got all these things that can affect it. So the first one is the gut-brain axis, and everyone's heard about that, and anything to do with stress, depression, and lots of conditions. For example, Parkinson's disease is very closely related to constipation. Yes. So you're thinking, wow, I don't want to get Parkinson's disease, and two, I want to fix constipation, but it must be linked to my brain. How do I work on that? Well, to do with issues, stress, but also the neurotransmitters and the chemicals I'll talk about very briefly. And then we've got from there, when you start chewing, as soon as you start chewing, you actually send messages to the rest of the gut to move everything through. So one of the best things you can do is start chewing. Chewing. Uh, chewing gum is a good example of it. It actually helps with reflux too, uh, interestingly enough, isn't it? So chewing gum and lots of chewing, getting your food and chewing, chewing, chewing. Most of the processed foods we eat now, we don't chew, so we're not sending the messages down. It starts here. It may end here, but it starts here. And the other one is then all the chemical messages that go through the esophagus and down into the stomach. They're sending messages saying the food's on the way. Hence, in under normal conditions, when you're chewing and you start eating, your body starts moving everything through your bowels, and for many people, they would go to the toilet very soon after. So it's sending the signals, the chemicals, the hormones, getting everything moving, and it starts at the top. So all the chemical messages go down, and then when it gets into the stomach, you have to have high hydrochloric acid. Now, if you don't have that, it doesn't send the messages up from then on. It just stops and says, okay, I'm, I'm gonna hold onto the food in the stomach, I'm gonna digest it really slowly, and as a result of that, we'll just wait around for everything. And the chemical messengers aren't being transmitted down there. Whereas if you've got high hydrochloric acid, a strong acid, yes, you need an acid stomach. And with that acid stomach, it then sends messages to change all the pH around the gut and all the chemical messages down to keep the peristalsis moving, all those what's called your motility through the gut. And so we need high hydrochloric acid. Then straight after that, you've got sodium bicarb. So you need the sodium bicarb too. What? Hold on. So where do you get the hydrochloric acid from? Well, you can do it from apple cider vinegar. Apple cider vinegar or hydrochloric acid betaine you can get as a supplement. And then we've got sodium bicarb. And you should watch my a video on sodium bicarb on YouTube. I've got the, the complete constipation solution. So all this in a lot more detail in a program on my YouTube. But at the moment, this will get you all started to understand what's happening. So we've got the um, sodium bicarb, and then we've got bile. Now, bile is critical again, one for healthy digestion, two for getting all the messages continuing on after the stomach. So we've got chemicals in there that actually initiate more messages going down there, not to mention the role it has with your hormones and how it breaks down and recycles the hormones, and that on, in itself can affect how fast or slow things move through your gut, particularly when they affect your thyroid and, and you have a state of hypothyroidism, a very slow thyroid action. And so we'll get the bile. Then from the bile, through all your gut, you've got melatonin. Now melatonin, everybody knows, is a sleep neurotransmitter. Well, why do you produce it in the gut? It's actually the neurotransmitter to to actually get everything moving through the gut and control it. So we need it, and therefore we need lots of foods with melatonin in and a supplement, perhaps. But one of the foods you've got, by the way, cherries, and the highest and richest source is pistachio nuts. So have some extra pistachio nuts thrown in there. And then we've got the microbiome 
in the large intestine, that's the green part there. And that microbiome is constantly sending messages to your brain, up through your vagus nerve, all the way around your body, and right back down through all of your gut to say, okay, we've got it happening. Here's the chemical to keep it moving, keep the motility going, keep it all moving and flowing through. And as a result of that, you start to get it all happening. Now, as I've um, already suggested, hormones are affected in the gut, and the hormones affect lots of things. Women will know that in particular, so you'll want to watch my videos on women's health and what's called the estrobilome, how estrogen and testosterone and all those hormones and many other things are recycled through the gut. And in, in, in women pre-menopause, they're only second to the ovaries in terms of the amount of estrogen they deal with and, and how they bring it in. Post-menopause even more important. So these hormones, um, and they can lead to things like hypothyroidism, which is linked to all of these conditions and it's influenced by the gut microbiome. So what we've got here is a kind of a, a very, very quick snapshot of how it's all linked. And I've just given you probably about a tenth of what really goes on in there. All of this is in my longer YouTube if you need the information, my constipation solutions, my reflux solutions, and all the gut solutions, because they're all linked in. If you've got reflux, you're more than likely going to have constipation and vice versa and so on. So coming back here, what can we do about it? Well, the first is sunlight. Nobody's ever told me about sunlight. Well, your circadian rhythm is about the timing in your body and your sunlight and your physical activity are the first things that set your timing, your circadian rhythm up. Physical activity, without doubt, one of the simplest strategies is just walk more. Be physically more active. Some deep diaphragmatic breathing. <sighs> Bringing that up there and exercising all those because what often happens is the muscles in there and the nerve system in there get very, very lazy with constipation. So doing a bit of forced breathing and exercise are in that area, but just general exercise, walking, always, always is the simplest strategy to get working with constipation. Stress reduction, chewing I've already mentioned, chewing as much as possible. So any other thing that can fit in there. Then we've got what can you do? Well, lots of lots of liquids, absolutely. And then fiber. And some people say, oh no, fiber. There's a lot of myths around fiber. And I wanna shoot them down. They're not based on science. It's called cherry picking. And what they've done is out of the 10,000 studies on the benefits of fiber for constipation, they've said, oh, look at these two or three studies here where they had these people with a unique form of constipation, an unusual different type of form of constipation, and they gave them psyllium husk, which is probably the worst type. That's what you get, yeah, that's the commercial brand, psyllium. They gave them lots of that and it, it, it added up and it actually made the constipation a bit worse. Wow, why? Because it doesn't break down. What you want is a, a combination of fibres, digestible fibres. You need fibres that are going to ferment, and those fermentable fibres produce the chemicals that also send the messages to the gut wall to start moving. So hence, you need the fibres. So when somebody says, oh, don't take fibre for constipation, no, don't take the psyllium husks, perhaps. But also look at their vested interest and they're usually trying to sell you some other um, miracle constipation thing. Now there are lots of herbs and lots of spices out there that will help with constipation without any doubt because it's an inflammatory disease. But when you get there, fibre, my favourite without any doubt is K-fibre um, because they've also got in the other ingredients that help with constipation. Kiwi fruit is a great add-on, shows up in the research. Prunes without any doubt whatsoever. Prunes aren't just fantastic for constipation. They're actually probably the single best food for bone health and a few other things in there. But you'll see, again, my other videos on that. And then uh, finally, without a doubt, probiotics. Probiotics play a huge role in it. Without those, chemi without those bacteria in the gut to break the fiber down, to send the messages, that's what it's about. It's all about the messages going to the brain and going to your thyroid and going to your uh, hormone glands around the body and going everywhere else and the gut wall and getting it moving. Without those chemical messages, nothing is going to happen. So it relies on the probiotics and it relies on the fiber along with all these polyphenols. And these are the green, bright reds, blues, purples, the colors that you get. Things like you're getting green tea and curcumin, turmeric and so on. And so that's an absolute must. And that's just the short list of what you can be taking. And the great thing is you can take them all together and in combinations, doing these all things. And, and finally, a couple of really simple things that you need to take out. And 
Everybody is different. Everyone and everybody's constipation is different. But getting rid of dairy, gluten is a gut poison. It poisons the gut bacteria. It poisons the, um, the gut wall leading to leaky gut and so on. Same with sugar, processed foods. Uh, you're not going to eliminate constipation if you're constantly eating a Western diet. You need an anti-inflammatory, Mediterranean, high fiber, high, high nutrient dense, plant-based, lots of, you know, have your meat, have your fish, fish, easy, fish by the way, chicken are easier to digest than meat in the case of constipation. So all of these things regulate it. It's about eating healthily in the process of doing all of these activities. Now, we have a huge amount of other data on our YouTube channel, which is just the same Dr. Peter Dingle PhD uh, YouTube, and all of that information is available with our longer videos to explain it in a lot more detail, if you want that detail.